Sterling Brown, who is running for Jackson County Legislative District Number Two. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Good. It doesn't quite sound <coughs> great. That's a little better. Okay. <laughs> My name is Sterling Brown. I'm running for the Jackson County Legislature in the 2nd District. I'm a firm believer that the small corner of Raytown that is embedded in the 2nd District of Jackson County that has expanded after the last rewriting of districts is even more encompassing a portion of Raytown that in a lot of ways is not vastly divergent and different from the second district that is more commonly known as far as the urban core. Okay? I have lived in the urban second district the majority of my life. I bought a home here in Raytown about six years, about eight years ago actually now, in 2006. I wanted to make sure before I took a step into public office or a candidacy or taking the, this, this human being predominantly out of my home that I wanted to make sure that my house was in order before I did that. Because I believe in being a good steward of not only reflecting what you do inside your home, out onto the street as far as in serving people. I have um, already begun uh, talking to uh, constituencies, not only here in this portion of Raytown, but also <coughs> in, um, in, in, in the urban core where I, again, I don't think that it is uh, remiss on anyone's uh, memory that there are portions of, of Raytown that mirror reflect the heart of the second district. And when you begin to talk to people, they have a whole lot of discrepancies in what you can do at the county level that affects everyday um, living, if you will. So one of the hallmark points of my candidacy is to bring listening and bring processing the direct constituency back into the process. I believe as a representative that my occupation will be my service. Nothing more and absolutely nothing less. Um, being that I live here in Raytown, there are ways that I believe that we can expand the presence and the utilization of the seed in the second district to bring more and more opportunities into Raytown, to bring more and more relationship building across the various um, uh, state agencies and local agencies that people do think have that uh, same effect that you could do with the legislature. There are various things in Jackson County that I believe need to be addressed. And some of those ways in which um, start by having the opportunity and the ability and the desire to ask hard questions. I'm ready to listen, and I'm ready to answer any and every question that anyone of this body would have. But um, as I know in my union background as a, an organizer and a, and a union representative, you absolutely need to listen and process before you make a move. And, and I appreciate you all giving me some time this evening and hope well, once again to come back and address this body even in, in a more detailed fashion. Thank you. What local? SEIU Local 2000 is where I represent it now. We, our local was merged and um, our members were split between two SEIU locals that exist now here in Kansas City. One? Mm -hmm. Local one, got all of our public sector members who I represented. I represented uh, members in probation and parole, uh, the work for the state of Missouri, and also patient care professionals, um, uh, the city of Independence. Uh, the, I organized the Housing Authority of Kansas City. Now, there's a long story as to why those folks are not in anymore, and I would be more than happy to answer. But then the other local was to, to directly answer your question was uh, Healthcare, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, and Missouri. It was a coalition of four states. They represent uh, largely primarily hospital or healthcare uh, sector workers. Second question. Yes, sir. I've heard rumors that somebody filed a suit with the state that was kicked back to the county prosecutor against uh, Reverend Tyndall. Mm -hmm. Was that you? It was not me. Okay. As um, as a matter of fact, and I want to address that just in a little bit more detail. I've been, you know, I've discussed and, and, and had some, some various uh, colleagues and 
and people who I would consider, um, who I take their advice and, and trust them, that have asked me and not pushed or cajoled, but asked me and prompted me over the course of the last maybe six, eight years about running for public office. Because I didn't feel that, you know, young budding family just married, uh, then it wasn't the right time for them to take on something that I would consider and garner so passionately that would take me out of that home and presence while I'm absolutely building the solid rock foundation that I'm going to govern on. Now, because of that, um, I understand why that, uh, why that lawsuit was filed, and, and I understand that there were some reasons behind it. It was not me, because I didn't think that it was um, absolutely right in, in the, the verbiage of this gentleman here to run against an incumbent that has done very good things, not only for the Jackson County as a whole, but in the member of the second district to some people's level and degree. Try to my best to make uh, the most shrewd and, and savvy decisions you know, before making um, a decision to do something that is very heavy undertaking, which I have decided to do now because he's <coughs> Step down. I just have one question. Thank you. Yes. For, uh, with the districts moving, you know, realignment and stuff, mm -hmm. can you tell us what part of Ray County is in the district now? The, you know, uh, that's, a, that's an absolutely great question. <coughs> um, I believe that is the corridor is almost directly yeah. east of here, not quite Sterling, that goes just about as far south and then cuts back in. Maybe in the around Gregory area. I'm not a, again. I'm not 100% certain. But then, as you carry from that eastern point across, you are. I mean, again, looking at in my eyes and what I've determined, a significant chunk of breakdown. I mean, you could literally flip it over into the Kansas City proper side, and it would look exactly the same as far as its demographic makeup, as far as the you know the, 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 the thing. We don't have a <coughs> municipal trash service, but other than that, there's a, a whole lot of mirroring uh, in those sections of Raytown. Right. They're on the website, Jason. Yeah. Right now. Well, yeah. they are. They, they put them up. They put them up, and, and in my research, but as I started to, you know, maybe it's the computer program I have, the pixelation I have, it's not extraordinarily detailed. You don't get a very accurate picture. So right now, like it does look like Raytown Road, like Ray but <laughs> then it's also the. I saw a couple of persons that has it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said it wasn't quite as far. I couldn't, I couldn't call it 100%. So I didn't want to, you know, answer it as, you know, with a level of succinctness. Um, actually, it won well, the Raytown City Limit that stops right here on 52nd Terrace. So, I mean, and I literally live across the, my across the street neighbors or Kansas City, Missouri. So when I say that mirroring, it's definitely because when I'm I know I don't look it, but when I'm jogging, I, uh, I see this entire, you know, chunk and area of the neighborhoods. You're welcome, sir. Go for it. Yes, sir. What do you make the difference that we feel more comfortable with you that uh, you have, when you'll be elected, that uh, you have achieved something? That we like to hear that uh, any? Do you have any specific <coughs> goal or any specific agenda? That's what we like to get. You know, that's a that's a very good question. It looks like he's getting a gap on me, so I don't want. May I answer his question? That, and then I'm going to call questions because I think at that point we need to get him scheduled. Certainly, and I'll be more than uh, I'll be more than honored to to take that opportunity. Um, I would probably say the first the first order of business for me is a proactive step, is to um, you know, take a, a strong, long, hard look and start solution building uh, surrounding a uh, county tax assessment for, for property taxes. There is a, um, uh, <clears throat> for, for lack of better terms, there was a tremendous uprising uh, by a, a significant number of Jackson Countyans in 2013. We had an assessor who stepped down and since then, and it's not an odd number year now, but in 2015 it will be. Since then, we haven't been given this county residents a, a significant list of wholesale changes or reform that is actually taking place. The one part about that that I hope to change in particular for the second district is that we don't know. There may be. We, have, we really don't know. 
Pardon me, I didn't mean to touch your shoulder. So, asking the you know, significant hard questions. Do we need to bolster the staffing of the assessor's department in, in the form of actual appraisers and boots on the ground? Do we need to even take a look at a step where you uh, solicit a county program, if you will, that trains in specific <coughs> to county regulations uh, of home appraisers, people who have their own home appraisal companies, contract them in a group to catch up. We got a backlog that could be a mile long. We had to catch up. So then we can start in the next odd number of year at, at ground level from, the, from ground zero, if you will, and playing the game not from catch up. I'm not a big guy on privatizing, but if doggone it, we have a, a, a backlog of some areas of this city that haven't been assessed with a hardcore boots on the ground assessment for a decade, we've got to do something about that tragic and now. And again, I'm not saying that it's not being done, but we don't 100% know. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you, appreciate it. And at this point, I am going to turn it over to tonight's uh, speaker, uh, candidate for county legislator, third district at large, Tony Miller. Well, it's been really nice. Well, thank you. Well, it's been really nice meeting you guys. Um, this is quite the lively club. Um, <laughs> I may have stepped in it. No, uh, no. I. Uh, it's it's great that you guys um, talk and, and discuss things. And um, well, I'm not sure. Uh, Richard, do you want me to just kind of talk about my background a little bit? Talk about your background. Okay. And, you know the high points. Of okay. Why great. You're running and what you want to accomplish. Okay. Great. Um, so, um, hail from Fort Osage. Uh, that's Jeff Jones territory. And um, we love it. <laughs> so I'm a Fort Osage Indian. <laughs> we did get thumped by Raytown, both Raytown schools periodically. Uh, my football team was 0 and 33, I think, my last three years. So I had a hell of a time getting recruited by anybody. And uh, I did get recruited by Mizzou and KU, and then I got hurt and ended up at Baker <laughs> so no it was um, so I did my undergraduate education there and it was great um, I did political science um, and then went to UMKC uh, for law and um, right out of there my first gig was um, Roger Potter hired me and I was the weed and rat prosecutor was, was, was my title I guess that he gave me and um, so I did uh, I worked with neighborhoods um, on um, just you name it. I mean, somebody, you know, their house was falling down and, and maybe they were elderly. And so, you know, do you go prosecute that person? No. You, you know, they may, they get a 10 day letter and then we talk to them about our paint program. And it was sort of like social work. Um, there were certainly some deadbeat landlords that we did prosecute. Um, so I did that part time um, and I had my own law firm. And boy, that was a miserable failure. <laughs> I uh, I was it, it was it was rough. So when I got the call from Judge Roldan, um, who's now our presiding judge of the county, um, he said, uh, "Are you still interested in being a law clerk?" Because I had a resume that I'd floated, you know, nine months before, and I just had kind of given up. And um, so when he called, I said, "Well, I could be out there in 30 minutes. <laughs> I go and get a suit on." I was literally I was waiting on my you know. I forget what I was doing. I was I was resurfacing a parking lot or something, and uh, so just in the split second, you know, um, I had an opportunity, and it was an opportunity that really changed my life. So I, I got to do um, I got to do the law clerk job. Um, yeah, Judge Roldan, for those of you who don't know him, um, just a, just a great human being, uh, trial judge. So I got to learn trial work and, and watch it. And then when Mike Sanders became prosecutor, I got to do it. Um, he brought me over, and um, that was my first taste of the combat uh, drug. The drug commission oversees uh, the combat tax, and so I got to do drug prosecutions, um, DUI prosecutions, and, and other felony stuff um, out there. So that a lot of folks don't know it, and uh, pardon me if you if you are up on it, but. There's, there are two venues. The county's kind of divided in half for, for uh, legal purposes. It's basically 435 East and then 435 West. Um, 
those prosecutions are kind of so if the rest if the arrest happens on this side or that side that's where it goes and so basically I had all the felony DUIs and drugs and you name it so I did that went out on my own or I went and worked for a firm and then uh, I'm a lawyer by the way I'm sorry uh, but um, I uh, I've had my own firm now for almost eight years and um, so I always knew I wanted to serve and um, it's really been people in this party that have given me a chance and, and helped me get to, to do what I love and just keep getting to do what I love. Um, so um, I was given an opportunity by the legislature and Mr. Sanders to serve on the Drug Commission and um, really enjoyed every bit of that. Um, that was about a three-year uh, three stint that I did. The only person I ever heard from on the Drug Commission was him. Well, <laughs> the only person that ever reached out was Tony to find out what, what do you need, how can we help you? Well, and, and so that's really why I ran, is because I, um, when you're on a commission, you make recommendations, and you do get to make a difference, I think, but I really wanted to step it up. Um, so um, having the opportunity to actually um, to make a difference and um, to keep Jackson County moving forward, um, I mean, everything from the improvements that we've seen with the, the courthouse, um, we've got half of our population or more living in the eastern half of our county, and we don't have the infrastructure to serve the people. Um, and because Mike Sanders and the legislature that's there now, um, you know, they had the, they've started us on the right track, and I'd like to keep it going um, in terms of... Um, they removed basically a bunch of things from the courthouse that we didn't have room for, and they found other county assets. For example, the prosecutor's office is going to go into the old examiner building. They totally revamped it, upgraded it. They've got a state-of-the-art place that they're going to move into the first week of May. Um, the old Truman Courthouse, they redid that. They moved um, you know, the tax office over there. Um, and so now... Um, if you've got 19 judges roughly in our county and you've only got, say, four circuit judges in independence and maybe, what, three or four associate circuit judges, um, they're doing, if you look at their caseload in independence, um, they're just swamped. And so if you filed, let's say you got hurt and you filed out in independence, every fifth lawsuit gets sent down to Kansas City. And so there's just an imbalance, and so hopefully to give people access to justice, um, we'll, we'll be able to continue with this court renovation and maybe even have some more resources in terms of more judges to hear cases um, in independence. And we need help, uh, of course, from the legislature um, in Jeff City. We can't just create, uh, the county can't just make its own circuit judge spot. That's got to go through Jeff City. Um, in terms of other things that I care about, um, you know, we've got a great sheriff in Mike Sharp um, who really did some new things when he came on. Um, he implemented the um, interdiction theory where um, we're really at the confluence of I-35 and I-70. And so it used to be Jackson County cooked its own meth and now it's really coming in from Mexico. And so um, instead of just doing things the old way, um, the sheriff and, and programs through combat like the Drug Task Force um, worked to interdict that stuff and use different methods than we had used before. Um, you know, we've just got a lot of good leadership in our county and, um, and I'd like to be part of it. Um, trying to think of other projects that I'm, I'm really interested in. I'm, I'm humbled that uh, Mr. Urbanus would allow me to, to come out and um, I'm going to come and sit with him and learn about um, about the land use. Um, that's been one of his major things: land use and parks. Um, you know, there's no way I could fill his shoes. Um, he's he's an icon. Um, you know, he's you know nationwide. There's nobody that's done what he's done, and and I'll never do it. But I I, I want to do my best. To, I'd be lucky to do half as good. Um, so um, I've been really blessed with his counsel, and um, and as long as he'll take my call, um, 
you know, I'm going to try to use his, you know, all the knowledge that he's he's gained over this time and the, the good things that he's done um, and try to continue that. Um, the parks were always dear to him. Um, and so um, I would, you know, I have no idea what my committee assignments would be, but I would love to work on combat since I have that background, formerly being the chair. Um, I spent just hours and hours and hours going through audits and talking about how we could change processes and um, accountability um, was a big thing that we did. Um, I'm probably boring you guys to death with the minutia. Um, so what else? So so I would I'd definitely be interested. I, economic development through, you know, to move our county forward. I think land use aligns up with that particularly. Um, we've got a lot of land and we've got a lot of land that could be repurposed that's maybe, um, you know, I just think of every time I drive Truman Road across that, uh, the old Armco place, I just wonder what could be, you know, and, and maybe I'm dreaming about stuff that can't be changed, but, you know, at least I think we have to think about it. And we've got all kinds of good land. Um, I mean, Jeff Jones has talked to me about it before. I mean, why don't we manufacture things? Um, why don't we do it here? Um, so, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm going to screen um, in the morning with uh, the firefighters, Taxpayers Unlimited. And so um, it was really um, a little, it was my first time to fill out a questionnaire. It was a little intimidating, but it was really good. It was really a good thing to think about, um, to think about who you are and what you believe in and what's important to you. And so you can imagine um, those questions were a lot about labor and um, I'm, I'm definitely with labor. I was a former member of the local 42, uh, the prosecutor's bargaining unit. Um, so I'm, I'm all labor. I made my wife buy a, an American car a couple weeks ago, and uh, <laughs> made her. <laughs> her. Her dad tried to. Her dad. No, her dad tried to sell her a Toyota, and I said, Nope, ain't happening.